Good afternoon and welcome to NTV News. I'm Siksha Sharma. Let's take a look into the headlines first. House of Representatives to continue deliberations on principles of appropriation bill. Finance Minister to address pre-budget queries of lawmakers of the National Assembly. UN issues red alert on climate change after record heat in 2023. WMO warns 2024 will be another record hot year. U.S. Appellate Court blocks Texas immigration law shortly after Supreme Court action litigation on law getting police arrest migrants at the border still continues. And IOC excludes Russian and Belarusian athletes from Paris Olympics opening. Players can compete as individual neutral athletes sans their country's flags. Welcome back to NTV News. Taking a look into news in detail now. The House of Representatives meeting is currently underway at the Federal Parliament Building in New Banishore. In the session, Energy, Water, Resource and Irrigation Minister Shakti Badr Bosnet will propose a general discussion on the agreement for establishing the International Solar Alliance, ISA. Additionally, Agriculture and Livestock Development Minister Jala Kumari Shah is introducing a proposal to discuss the Food Hygiene and Quality Bill along with the report of the Agriculture Cooperative and Natural Resources Committee. Moreover, a proposal seeking passage of the Food Hygiene and Quality Bill 2080 will also be presented at the House session. The meeting will also include deliberations on the principles and priorities of the Appropriation Bill for the fiscal year 2081-82. Furthermore, Finance Minister Barshaman Poon will address the queries raised by lawmakers during the ongoing pre-budget discussion at the House of Representatives. Likewise, a meeting of the National Assembly is also uh, is underway at the Federal Parliament building in Ubanishur. As per the agenda of the meeting, uh, the Chairman of the National Assembly will propose the names as members for the Business Advisory Committee. The meeting will also continue deliberations on principles and priorities outlined in the Appropriation Bill for the upcoming fiscal year. Then after Finance Minister Barsha Manpun is scheduled to address the queries of the members on the principle of appropriation bill. The Finance Minister will also table a proposal to send the Secure Transactions Bill First Amendment 2080 to the Legislature and Management Committee for further discussion. The Kathmandu Valley has witnessed cloudy weather since this morning and a little drizzle is taking place place in much part of the valley since the morning today. Presently, there is a partial influence of the westerly low pressure system and local winds in Nepal. According to the weather forecasting division of the Department of Hydrology and Meteorology, light to moderate rain with thunder and lightning is likely to occur at a few places of Koshi, Madhesh and Bagmati provinces and at one or two places of the hilly region of other provinces. The weather will be partly to generally cloudy throughout the country today with light rain accompanied by thunder and lightning at some places of Koshi and Madhesh provinces. According to the division, light snowfall is taking place at one or two places of the high hilly and mountainous region of Koshi province. The weather will be partly cloudy in the hilly regions of the country, including in Koshi, Madhesh, Pakmati, Gandaki and Lumbini provinces tonight as well. Let's take a look into a short break here. More news follows up on the other side to stay with us. Welcome back to NTV News. Taking a look into further developments. The construction of the Super Trishuri hydropower project in Gondaki village 1 Butar of Gorkha, Gorkha is making significant progress. Blue Energy Private Limited has initiated the project construction with an investment of 19 billion rupees aiming to generate 100 megawatts of electricity. Niranjan Regmi, the company's director, has confirmed the advancement of a project through a contract agreement with CE Construction from Kathmandu. Currently, the groundwork for the constructing powerhouse is underway as a crucial phase of the project. The project area spans about 24 hectares of land for which around 40 Ropanese 
of private land has been acquired by the company. Additionally, a Bailey Bridge is under construction over the Trishali River connecting Gorkas Gandakirulu municipality, Butar, and Ichakamana Rulu municipality of Chitwan. The company plans to invest approximately 140 million rupees to build the Bailey Bridge with materials provided by the road planning office of Gorkha. Taking you to other updates, where with the aim of promoting the Nepali language and culture, the Nepali speakers of the origin or Nepali origin living in different countries of the world have formed the Association of Nepali Origin (ANO), led by social activists of Nepali origin from 27 countries. The association has formed a 54-member executive committee chaired by Dili Adhikari, a social worker residing in the U.S. Adhikari, who was born in Bhutan, also serves as the president of the International Welfare and Support Foundation of America. With the foundation support, the first convention of Nepali-speaking people in Bangkok was successfully organized. During the convention's inauguration, Nepali ambassador to Thailand, Than Bahadur Wali, expressed confidence in ANO's ability to unite Nepali speakers globally. ANO's President Adhikari emphasized the organization's commitment to fostering unity among Nepali speakers worldwide. ANO's Vice President Senior Advocate Sushil Kumar Pant highlighted the participation of Nepali speaking individuals from over 45 countries in various campaigns that includes promoting the Nepali language and culture. Nepali artists representing diverse cultural backgrounds have come together to promote the rich culture of Nepal's far western region. Artists adorn the walls of Mohindranagar Market in Kanchanpur with vibrant murals depicting the rich culture of the far west region. Started on the auspicious occasion of Araniko Divas, these paintings captured the essence of far western culture featuring Tharu women adorned in traditional attire and showcasing various forms of traditional dance such as Choliya and Hudkeli dances. A total of 22 talented artists have collaborated on this project, each contributing their unique perspective to the depiction of authentic cultural scenes along the district administration road there. Local residents have expressed their appreciation for this initiative, acknowledging its positive impact on the promotion of art and culture in the area. Let's take a look into yet another break. Stay with us for more updates on the other side. Global temperatures smashed heat records last year as heat waves stalked oceans and glaciers suffered record ice loss, the UN said on Tuesday, warning that 2024 was likely to be even hotter. The annual State of Climate report by the UN's World Meteorological Organization confirmed preliminary data showing that 2023 was by far the hottest year ever recorded. And last year was part of the warmest 10-year period on record, the WMO Weather and Climate Agency said, with even hotter temperatures expected going forward. Reacting to the report, UN Chief Antonio Guterres said it showed a planet on the brink. A divided Supreme Court on Tuesday allowed Texas to begin enforcing a law that gives police broad powers to arrest the migrants suspected of crossing the border illegally while a legal battle over the measure plays out. The conservative majority's order rejects an emergency application from the Biden administration which says the law is a clear violation of federal authority that would cause chaos in immigration law. Meanwhile, the U.S. Appellate Court has blocked the immig new law shortly after Supreme Court's action that allowed any police officer in Texas to arrest migrants for illegal entry and authorize a judge to order them to leave the U.S. And let's take a look into the highlights of what's coming up next. A Nigerian village has been left almost empty after gunmen kidnapped over 80 people on Tuesday. Gunmen in Nigeria have kidnapped at least 87 people in a new attack. Residents and police say after an armed gang seized 286 students 
and staff from a school earlier this month. Official on Monday said the attack took place in the Kazuru area of Kaduna State and the abducted included women and children. Bandits routinely loot villages and carry out mass kidnappings for ransom in northwestern north central Nigeria where the violence has displaced about one million people. On March 7, gunmen kidnapped more than 250 students from a school in a Kazuru state in one of the biggest attacks in years. Time now for sports update. The International Olympic Committee on Tuesday barred athletes from Russia and Belarus from participating in opening ceremonies in Paris as organizers target countries that are responsible for the war in Ukraine. Athletes from those nations, though no teams would be allowed to compete in individual events as the Individual Neutral Athletes or the AINs. AINs will not participate in the parade of delegations during the opening ceremony since they are individual athletes, according to an IOC statement. But any Russian or Belarusian athletes associated with the military and national security will not be eligible to be entered or to compete. The IOC said Russia invaded Ukraine on February 24, 2022, and Moscow's ally and Ukrainian neighbor Belarus has played a key support role in the aggression. The Paris 2024 opening ceremony is set for Friday, July the 26th. North Korea's men's soccer squad has reached Japan for the second round of the 2026 World Cup Asian qualifiers. The team was granted entry as an exception to Japan's sanctions on North Korea. The visitors will face Japan's national squad at the National Stadium in Tokyo on Thursday. The Japanese government bans in principle the entry of North Korean nationals as part of its sanctions on Pyongyang over its nuclear and missile development programs. But international sports events are an exception. Following Thursday's match in Tokyo, the Japanese and North Koreans are set to play at the Kim Il-sung Stadium in Pyongyang on March the 26th. It will be the first time in 13 years for Japan's national squad to play in North Korea. A quick look into the headlines as a reminder of the top stories. House of Representatives to continue deliberations on principles of appropriation bill. Finance Minister to address pre budget queries of the National Assembly members. UN issues red alert on climate change after record heat in 2023. WMO warns 2024 will be another record hot year. U.S. Appellate Court blocks Texas immigration law shortly after Supreme Court action. Litigation on law letting police arrest migrants at the border still continues. An IOC excludes Russian and Belarusian athletes from Paris Olympics opening. Players can compete as individual neutral athletes sans their country's flag. That's all for now. We'll bring you another news bulletin in Nepali in less than an hour. And our next English news will bring you right at 6 in the evening. Keep watching Nepal Television. Have a great day ahead and namaste.